So I'm speaking. See how I'm talking right now? This is how I talk to thoughts. When thoughts come, you can't think your way out of them. You have to talk your way out of them. You have to speak it. Your words shut down the thoughts. Your words tear down the strongholds. Because whatever you're speaking is where your mind goes. Awesome. Okay. So I've got something great for you guys today. This is something that is, I, I want, it's something that I don't think is taught um, succinctly, if you will, that will really actually, I'm trying not to be, I'm not trying to sound, not sound cliche, but it'll change your life. I'll just put it this way. How many of you guys have been actively, you could say, I'm actively believing God for a breakthrough of some kind. Me too. One of the things that we need to define is what is a breakthrough? And this is actually something that my wife brought to my attention. You guys all know Rachel. Uh, she's a rock star. She is a powerhouse of faith for sure. I want to show you something. Let's go ahead and we're going to read John 14. Let's go to 14, 26. And this is Jesus talking. And he says something great. Um, let, let me uh, actually, let me start with. This is something I, I believe I shared at the beginning of last week's um, Bible study, but I want to read you this little excerpt first, because this is almost like a, a good precursor to if you do this first and like get this frame, this perspective first, then go read the word, it's going to set you up for more success. So listen to this. The promises of God should be taken literally as if a man promised them to you. Begin to act upon them and believe them just as they are without any question. They do not need to be interpreted. Attach no condition to them other than those that are stated. Meet the conditions they say, and you'll have the results. All right. And he's talking about God's word, talking about his promises. So think about it like this. One of the things we do is we'll read something in the word, and then we'll be like, well, all of a sudden it's the enemy, but I'll just say us. Um, the enemy comes in to steal that seed. And what we do is we start to reason out all the all the, the ways and reasons why that scripture doesn't mean what we think it means and how that only applies to us if we have never sinned and if we perform perfectly. And obviously the scripture wouldn't mean that because, you know, you don't know what I did last night. You don't know what I said last night. You don't know this. You don't know this about my history, okay? So we're gonna set all that aside we're not going to add our own conditions to this. We are going to take it literally as if a man promised it to us. So I emailed you guys and said, we're going to go live Thursday at 1030 Central, and I'm going to give away a Bible. And guess what? You guys believed me. So if you can believe me, a man, you can believe God. You can trust him. You acted. You guys, you guys are operating in faith right now. By faith, you trusted me to do what I said I would do. So we have a whole book of God telling us and promising us things. Yet we got to learn to act like it's true. Act and behave like it's true. It says all the promises God should be taken literally. And if you meet the conditions, you will have them. Don't put your own conditions, just the conditions that are stated here. So to win the Bible, the condition was you have to register and you have to show up. All right. You met the conditions. One of you is going to win a Bible. You believe me, a mere mortal, a human, yet we struggle to believe God. But we're not going to do that anymore. So what I'm about to read you, that's the preframe. That's perspective. Every time you open the word, come at it from that state and from that place. And that's how you're going to live in power. That's how you're going to take out of the word and actually get the results he promises. So let's go to John 14, 26. Jesus is talking and he says, 
But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Think about that for a minute. Jesus is peace. It's like the best level of peace, right? He's God's son. He has full peace that everything is going to be all right. Whatever you're going through, you have the same peace that he had. That's pretty remarkable because it allows you to stand up against anything. Now, listen to this. I'm going to give you the, uh, the, the Greek definition of that particular word, peace. I'm using uh, blueletterbible.org to look this stuff up. And it's the word irene. And listen to what this means. It means security, safety, prosperity, felicity. And then it says, because peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous. It is the Messiah's peace. Another de definition, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation and so fearing nothing from God and content with your earthly lot, whatever that is. You're content where you're at. I'm not satisfied, but I'm content. There's a difference. I'm happy with what I got. I'm at peace with what I got. It's okay to want more, but I'm not bummed, mad, or frustrated at what's going on right now. That is interesting definitions, isn't it? Jesus says, I give you my peace. I give you my security, my safety, prosperity, felicity. Felicity means extreme happiness because peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous. You have the Messiah's peace. You have a tranquil state of your soul assured of its salvation. Okay, so listen, side note, bonus points. Who can put in the chat what we've learned recently salvation actually means? Who can put in the chat? We've studied this out. What does salvation mean? It does not just mean going to heaven after you die. What else does it mean? That's a part of it, but that's incomplete. Can someone tell me? All needs are met. That's a part of it. The peace and prosperity health package. Is it, is it for later or is it for now? Gary says sozo. That's, that is the technical Greek word. Yes. Heaven on earth. Yes. Yeah, so um, you might need to go back through the, the Romans Bible study, uh, but that's what it means. Salvation, we've watered it down, and so it's actually been a little bit detrimental to the body of Christ because we think salvation just means going to heaven when you die. But again, it's not incorrect, just incomplete. Yes, you go to heaven when you die. That's salvation. But salvation actually means this word sozo is where it's usually translated. There's a second word that is an extension of the word sozo. But what it means is uh, deliverance, peace, health, prosperity, security, freedom, freedom from bondage, freedom from sin. Now, wholeness, completeness, completeness, Elaine says, yes. No condemnation, yes. It means you have it now also. That changes, it should change how you look at your life. Many, many, many Christians think the, the formula or pattern for life is struggle, be miserable, be broke, but think it's okay because God did this to you to somehow make him look good or something and then die and everything's gonna be cool then. That's actually wrong and you should repent. I love you, but it's incorrect. Living that way makes Christianity or living for God look awful. What it does is it makes people who are successful in the world look at us and look at our lifestyle as a downgrade. Yeah, maybe they're not fulfilled and maybe they're not going to heaven later, but their current life is better than a lot of Christians' current lives. And so we're over here like, hey, put on the jersey, come to our team. And they're like, the losing team? My team's winning. 
that's how they see it. So what we want to do is we want to make God look good because he is. We want to know what the Bible actually says. No longer live in deception, but walk in the peace, prosperity, health, purpose, calling, fulfillment, deliverance that God has made available to us now through the death and resurrection of Jesus. So when Jesus died, actually technically when Jesus rose again, that's when the new covenant activated. That new covenant of salvation, salvation is a gift, can't earn it now, just a gift, you got it. You're a Christian, you got it. You've asked Jesus into your heart, you've got it. There's no condemnation. You are flawless in his eyes. I'm about to re-preach all our old Bible studies in one message. You're flawless in his eyes, but you have that amazing heaven on earth life now. Even Jesus in Matthew 6, he's like, hey, pray like this on earth as it is in heaven. It's a cool way to live. Jesus told me to pray like that. You should probably do it. Not hell on earth and then heaven later. God's people don't need to live like that. Okay, that's for somebody. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Now listen to this part. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I've got it here in the Amplified, and I'm going to read it. I'm going to read this to you. Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. So do you have it now? Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Dude, do y'all know it says that? Now listen, listen to what's implied here. We can put two and two together. I give you, actually, let's go back up to 26. Remember, he says, I've given you the Holy Spirit. He's going to go up to be with the Father. He's telling them what's going to happen. He's like, hey, guys, here's what's going to happen. And then it happened, and they were all, like, shocked. But he's like, I just told you. But the helper, I'm going to read it from the Amplified, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. The Holy Spirit acts on Jesus' behalf in you now. Dude, this is, this should change how you go to work today. You're going back to work after this. The comforter. Sometimes we need comfort. The advocate. He's got your back. Fighting for you. The intercessor. He's communicating to God on your behalf, on Jesus' behalf, in Jesus' name. The counselor. Take this stuff literally. Did you know you can go to him if you need counsel? Because of this, now that he's given us that, we have it now. Because he's given us that, he can do verse 27. You can do verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My perfect peace I give to you. Now here's where I really was trying to get. He gives you a command right after that. He gives you the tools you need. He equips you. And then he says, now do this. You've got it. Now go do this. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Question. Does it say pray to God and ask him to remove troubles from your heart? But that's how we usually pray. That's usually how we think about it. This is another one of those scriptures where Jesus has delegated power to you. I give you peace. God gave you the Holy Spirit. Now you don't let your heart be troubled. Yeah, Sarah says, speak to the mountain. We talk about that in Mark 11, 23 and 24. Most people pray and say, God, move this mountain. 
pray to God to move the mountain. But the scripture doesn't say that. It says, you speak to the mountain. You tell it to move. Don't let your heart be troubled. Uh, Lena, could you do me a favor? Could you put John 14, 27 in the Amplified Classic in there? It has, it has like two or three extra words that are really cool. This matters when it comes to your breakthrough because a lot of times we are over here waiting for God to move and do something when he's telling you to do it. You have the power to do it. Too many people have been waiting for months, years, and decades, and it's never happened. It hasn't happened a lot of times because you haven't done anything. He's given you the power. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be a prey. Let's look at, oh, Lena, uh, no, just that, that same one you had up, that John 14, 27, but in the Amplified Classic. Let's go to Philippians 4. Verse 6. And guys, when I'm like the way I study the word, I want I want to get some of that in you. The way that we do this is when we read something, like and, and when you're reading the word, you don't have to read a lot. It's not this thing where you're trying to consume a certain amount. You could read one sentence and just stay on that one sentence, and it's going to give you what you need. When we do that, what we're trying to do is gain understanding from it. I'm trying to get what's in this book, what God, this instruction book he gave me. I'm trying to get it in me and make it who I am. Okay, here's the scripture. Thank you, Lena. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Listen to the next phrasing. This is in the chat. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. How many of you guys need to stop allowing yourself to be agitated? Do not permit yourself. Jesus said, don't permit yourself to be fearful and intimidated, cowardly and unsettled. Man, how many of you guys think about your money and feel unsettled? Distracted, trying to be present with your kids trying to be present with your spouse, trying to do date night, but you're just thinking about money and lack thereof. I get it. I get it. But Jesus said, don't do it. And if the master said, don't do it, you can do it. He's given us that power, that ability. He, won't, he will not give you a command you can't carry out. That would be unjust of him. And he is just. He said to do it, that means you can do it. Don't let your heart be troubled. Get a bad doctor's report. Don't let your heart be troubled. But it feels very real, I know. But what we're doing is we're making the word of God more real than what we see and what we feel. More real than what our bank account says. Have you guys ever done this? This is a, this is a key I know some of you have done this. Have you ever felt rich and wealthy and abundantly supplied even though your bank account said you were not? Have you ever gotten yourself there? I've done it. I work to do that. I want to live like that. It's that same concept when it comes to anything your health. What you want to do is 
get yourself on the inside, see yourself as God sees you as healthy, healed, and well, even though you have back pain or something hurts or you have some symptoms. What you're doing is working to see yourself as God sees you. Perfect, complete, lacking nothing in all the areas. I use finances and health in most of my illustrations because that is what most people are going through. That's where the enemy attacks us hardest, especially on Christians. Why? He wants you sick, so you're ineffective, and then he wants you dead early, so you can't do anything against him. He also wants you broke so that you're limited. You can't help people. You can't help yourself, and it also makes God look bad. The giant deception we have fallen for as Christians is we think that God is doing those things to us when it's the devil the whole time. Why would God want you sick if he provided all of these promises and provision for healing? <laughs> Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 is prophesying what Jesus is going to do. And the first thing it says is he's going to die on the cross. He's going to take your sins and he's going to take your sicknesses. Also talks about taking away your griefs and sorrows. That's another one to think about. You might go through a, a season of grief about something, but don't stay there. Don't get stuck in that moment. I know some people whose um, parents died, and, and they weren't even young. They were in their mid-30s. I mean, I think that's young, but they weren't like kids. Uh, they're in their mid-30s, and a parent passed away. I talked to this person like six years later. And she and I was like, hey, how are you doing? How's life? And she goes, life sucks. And she started talking about how her, one of her parents had passed away six years ago. And I'm like, yo, stuck in a moment. Like, it's a bummer. But there's just a season for that. Because Jesus carried away our griefs, our pains, our sorrows, our sickness, infirmities, and our sins. Carried those things away. You've been made whole. So what we're doing when we are tapping into this peace, which means more than just the normal definition we might have of it, which means that prosper, prosperity, that security, that health, all those things, I'm tapping into that. I'm seeing myself with it now, changing that image of yourself on the inside to line up with the image that God has of you. God said, I made you in my likeness, which just means to be like me, to operate like me. I made you in my image. Okay. Let's live like that. Mm, okay. Like Philippians 4, 6. I got so much I want to say. Uh, who all wants to go like two more hours? Just kidding, kind of. Okay. All right. I'll hang out. Be anxious for nothing. That's it. So we... Again, this is how I read. I'll read a sentence and I'll look at it and be like, be anxious for nothing. That's a command. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know how we have these things where we feel greedy if we pray for anything more than just what we need. You ever heard that? You ever felt that? I don't want to keep praying for that. Like there's starving kids over there. And like, I can't pray for that. Like there's a lot of poverty in where I live. What? It says through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests Be made known to God. You can do that. Yeah, you can make requests. Of course, let them be known. Verse 7 says, And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You guys have heard this before. I'm not confident we know how to apply it and live it yet. How many of you guys have experienced a feeling of anxiety in the last 30 days? Yes. 
how many of you guys feel like your hearts and your minds have been under attack? Yeah, everybody, Me, my hand's raised. But it says, if I do those things and meet those conditions, the result I will get is the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding that will guard my heart and my mind through Christ. I want to read you some of the footnotes here real quick. This is from the Dake Study Bible. Back under Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. It says in the footnotes, this is why I like this guy. Do not tolerate anxiety or worry, for it will injure your own soul. I love you guys, but I don't want to hear any of you, any of you talking about my anxiety this, my anxiety that. Stop. Be anxious for nothing. If you guys are 30 years or older, you know that this my anxiety thing is a trendy thing to say. We didn't, no one said that back in the day. Nobody owned that and claimed that and just took it like it was a, I don't know, it might ruffle some feathers, but like a disability or something that we can't do anything about. And it's like this thing, my cross to bear is my anxiety. No. Man, there was somebody I was praying with uh, to get a promotion at their job. And man, this, this, this hurt my heart. He uh, uh, came here from Mexico, had the really rough upbringing, that kind of story. Got saved, turned his life around, married, has kids, started working at a um, kind of a factory situation. And then he got a hold of some of my stuff. We started talking and he started leveling up. Next thing you know, he got promoted to manager. And for him, he's like just praising God like crazy because it's what he prayed for. But then also it adds to that kind of, I came from nothing look where I am story. Like the in his family, it's basically no one's ever gone that far. Family members, drugs, gangs, all this kind of the classic story. So I'm thrilled for the guy. Praise the Lord. Like he's applying God's word and it's working. Comes to me about six weeks later. And I said, man, how's the job going? You're a manager. You're over people. Like you've got, you manage this area, this area. You've got like 14 employees. Like, dude, what's up? You know, I was thrilled for the guy. And he goes, man, I actually went to my boss and I asked for a demotion back to my old job. It was just too much stress and I just couldn't handle it. My anxiety was just through the roof. I just couldn't take it. And I'm like, no, no, what? Who taught you to think like that? Because the word didn't. It sounds like the world put a little bug in his ear and said, hey, it's not your fault. It's your anxiety. You just can't, it's just like you weren't built for that. I, I just wasn't really built to handle that much stress. I could never start a business because I don't do stress well. I'm saying those, you probably have had those thoughts. Shut them down. Those are not God-based thoughts. Those are not faith-based thoughts. That's fear. Who is the producer of fear? Your enemy. My buddy leveled up, was in the process of changing his family tree, making more money than anyone in this family. No one in his family has ever become a manager of anything. And Satan just kind of easily talked him out of it through some tough experiences. He probably messed up and got yelled at or something. It was probably something he needed to learn and grow. It probably hurt. There's probably some iron trying to sharpen some iron, but it's too painful. And because we think of things like we hear, oh, yeah, yeah, just my anxiety. I'm just X, Y, Z. I'm just this. I'm just that. I've got this. I've got that. No. <laughs> what I want to say is you got to level up and quit being a wuss. And you got to get some thick skin. And just like we read in John 14, 27 in the Amplified, I'm going to go back up to it real quick. You guys don't have to, but it said, uh, stop allowing yourselves. No, that's the Amplified Classic. I'm going to read. The one where he said, I've, 
Yeah, let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. There's a scripture in Isaiah 41 that says, God will harden you to difficulties. I think it's Isaiah 41.10 in the Amplified Classic, I believe. You can look it up later. But listen, that's how Christians are supposed to be. That's how Christians are supposed to live. We don't keep one foot in the world and one foot in the word. We go all in on the word and we'd be anxious for nothing. And we let the Holy Spirit strengthen me and give me courage and strength for every challenge, no matter the circumstance. You don't quit because it's hard. You ask God and say, God, strengthen me here. You said you would. You said you never leave me. You never forsake me. It says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. Let's get after it. Do not tolerate anxiety or worry, for it will injure your soul. God alone can help you, and he will do it if you will pray about everything that happens and give thanks in everything. And then the, the footnote to where it says, let your requests be made known to God. He goes down to details. For we are commanded to let all requests be made known to God. Requests for material, physical, and spiritual needs and wants. Everything that concerns us in life along any line. Why could you not ask your dad for that? That's the, uh, I'm re currently reading the footnotes in the Dake Study Bible on that scripture we just read. I like how he says we are commanded to let all requests. That Before we got started, remember that little excerpt I read you, that preframe? That's what we're talking about. When we read the word, these are commands. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Okay, he's telling you how to operate. Don't put your own conditions on that. Meet the conditions that are stated here and you'll get it. But if you put your own conditions, well, this doesn't mean like anything. Like I couldn't ask for like anything. I'm not greedy. I'm not going to just ask for a million dollars. Right? We, do, we make all this stuff up. And it's like, okay, if that's what you want to add, it's going to mess your faith up though. What we got to do is we got to get in this word and be like, oh, that's what it actually says. Wait, is that what it means? I don't see anything else that says it doesn't mean that. Well, one time my pastor said this, this preacher said this, my buddy said this, my grandmama said that. Yeah, yeah. I know they felt that, said that, experienced that, but does the word say that? Let's go get what it says. Let's, let's align with that. All right, I'm gonna wrap up with this. You've got commands. You've got the power. You've been empowered. You have the ability. That's all that means. When someone says you've been empowered, you have the ability, you can do it. He's given that to you. You can... Not let your heart be troubled. Then, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Verse 7 goes on and says, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. It doesn't make sense that I have peace right now because look at my bank account. It doesn't make sense I have peace right now because of what the doctor said. Or I'm actually not worried about it at all. In fact, I kind of forgot for a second. I'm not even thinking about those things. I'm not being negative bank account conscious. I'm not being doctor's report conscious. We have, that's what the greatest things that God's given us. We have the power to control what we think about. You can take every thought captive and pull it into the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5. You can take every thought captive. You get one thought, out. you have a lot of thoughts all day, but you get one at a time and you can take it captive. No, I don't think about that. No, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. I'm not going to let it be agitated. I'm not going to let it be unsettled. Nope. Because I have the peace of God who guards my heart and my mind. I have that. So I'm speaking. See how I'm talking right now? This is how I talk to thoughts. When thoughts come, you can't think your way out of them. You have to talk your way out of them. You have to speak it. Your words shut down the thoughts. Your words tear down the strongholds. Because whatever you're speaking is where your mind goes. Philippians 4, 8, if you keep going down that line, he tells you what to think about. Whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good, 
if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, think and meditate on those things. Think on those things. It tells you what to think about. In Colossians 3, I believe, is where it says, set your mind on things above, not things of the earth. He's telling you your mind matters. What you think about matters. We need God's peace to guard our hearts and our minds. You guys know these words. I want them to become a part of who you are and what you do. So what happens is we take what we read and what I'm telling you today. I'm giving you knowledge. We need to move it from knowledge to wisdom. Wisdom is when you apply what you know. It means you actually do it. So if you have a negative report, financially, health, or whatever arena, you don't like what you see, you don't like what you've heard, you don't like what they're saying, you don't like the way things are looking, you shut that down and you say, no, I have Jesus's peace in my heart. I have his security. I have his prosperity. I have his health. I have his deliverance. I have his salvation. You can't be in my life. That's what I have now. And you might have to say that 42 times today. Say it 42 times. Here's the result. Here's what I'm getting at. Your breakthrough is not actually the money coming in. Your breakthrough is not actually the good doctor's report. Your breakthrough is that feeling when you know that you have God's peace now. That's why I asked you earlier, if you ever had a negative bank account or very little in there, and you have this feeling of <sighs> everything's going to be all right. Your faith has risen. Your doubt and unbelief has left. And it's like you got it right now. That's actually what faith is. I'm going to read you Hebrews 11, 1. Now, faith is the assurance. And listen, Elaine's right. Now, and I like this word assurance. It's kind of what I'm describing here with the peace. I'm assured that everything's good. God's got it. Everything's going to be okay. Real quick, has anybody experienced that type of peace? Or even though it looks crazy, you're just like, oh, okay, I've got it. I got it. Bank account didn't change. Health report didn't change. But you're just like, I got it. That's the breakthrough. That's what a breakthrough actually is. And that's actually what you're looking for. Because as soon as you get that, you're back in the game. As soon as you get that, you know the money's coming because your faith is risen. And if your faith is risen, it has to happen. If your faith is gone down and out, it won't happen. You got your faith back. You got your hope back. That's what the breakthrough is. You got your assurance. Now, now. Faith is the assurance, and I like this word. It's the title deed. It's the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen. Now listen to this. It is the conviction of the reality, the thing you want, your breakthrough you're looking for. It's the conviction of their reality. It's real right now. You're convicted that it's real. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses yet, has not yet been experienced. So like, I don't see it, but faith says it's real. I've got it now. That's the breakthrough. Got it now. And here's the best part. This is actually in your control. We are not waiting for God to give us this feeling. We can go activate it. 
you want this feeling of breakthrough. It's the assurance of the things you hope for. It's faith at full power, faith activated. When you have that, like I said, you're back in the game. Nothing's going to stop you. Nothing's going to slow you down. You're not distracted. You're not unsettled anymore. Ah, hope you guys are getting this. The way you do this is by speaking and confessing what God has said. That's why inside of Increase Warrior, one of the first things we do is we help you create a morning faith formula. And what that does is that's God's promises and words that you can speak over your life in your situation that causes that faith to rise for whatever unique spot you're in. Put you back in the game. Put you back on top. Put you back up, ready to win. There's been many, many times. Recently, it wasn't a... Um, like a directly negative doctor's report. But with one of our kids, the doctor's like, hey, we kind of want to check this one thing out a little bit. So we're going to run a couple extra tests. And then of course you have to like wait a long time for the test. And then you got to wait a long time before the results. And you know, it was messing with me for, for a little bit. It messed with me for a couple hours. And what I was doing, this is the process, is I would try to work. And then the enemy would say, yeah, but what about that? Yeah, but what happens at this? Yeah, but think about that. What he's trying to get you to do, what he's trying to get me to do is to go down this negative downward spiral rabbit trail, imagining worst case scenarios. This is how he operates. He does it in every area, realm, and arena. He does it with your health. He does it with your marriage. He does it with your finances. He does it with all things, okay? So just recognize the patterns so we can stop it. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. This is a, a device of the devil. So strategy. I knew what he's doing. It was like, stop, you can't do that to me, right? I know how to take thoughts captive now. So what I did is I went to the word and I found scriptures that promised the result I wanted for my kid. I wrote them down. I looked them up in different translations. I spoke them out loud. I said, Satan, I bind you. You can't touch my family. Word says we can do that started speaking these things, started declaring them, confessing them. Confessing just means to say the same thing as, so I'm just saying the same thing that God said about my kid. That sounds like a good idea. And within 45 minutes or so, I got my breakthrough. I didn't get a call from the doctor with a good report, but I got the breakthrough of, oh yeah, everything's gonna be all right. God's got this. He's already promised it to me. My faith rose and I had the assurance. I was assured of the positive outcome. Jeremiah 29, 11. We know this one. One of the translations says, I know the plans I have for you. God says, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans for good and not evil. To give you a hope in the future. One says, plans for good, not disaster. So where my mind was going was towards disaster. So I could stop and say, wait, that's not God's plan for my daughter. His plans are for good. They're not for disaster. Oh, then it's a lie. Oh, it's just a lie. You see what I'm saying? Ah, man. Okay. Did that help anybody? Do you guys know what to do now? That's really what I want to get. I'm not trying to just show you guys that I read the Bible a lot. I'm trying to get you to know what to do. Do you guys know what to do now? If you're experiencing all those symptoms that Jesus said in John 14, 27, like if your heart is troubled, if your heart is afraid, if it's agitated, disturbed, unsettled, cowardly, if you're feeling those things, if you're distracted right now, thinking about lack or sickness or something, do you know what to do?
Awesome. Josh says he was feeling helpless last night. Perfect. You're not. You are not helpless in your situation. You are, you've got all of God backing you now. You're a man of power and authority. It's godly power and authority. You can do something about it. You can speak to the mountain. He says, you say to the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And if you believe and don't doubt in your heart, that man will have whatever he says. Yeah, don't cower down. Yeah. When he said, okay, perfect. We'll have a replay up. Okay, two things real quick. Um, we're going to give away the Dake Study Bible. And I'm going to drop that link to the, the Faith on Demand app. No, actually, it's in school. I'm not going to give you all a shortcut. You got to be in the school thing. It's in the it's in the uh, the free increase community. Okay, so listen. I'm going to show you this right here. Um, if you guys are in the community, make sure you're. It it it's great on the phone and tablet, but it looks really good on desktop. I'm just saying on a laptop. You come over here to the classroom area, and we got all these things. Some of them are locked until you do a couple things like introduce yourself and like a couple posts and those things will unlock for you. So it's kind of cool, I think. Uh, but down here, the Faith on Demand app, okay? Uh, this thing is, it's just a little um, chat GPT bot thing I put together, but it's, it's helping people. There's people in here who are like writing devotionals with it and doing all kinds of cool things. So whatever area your faith needs strengthened in, you can just come here. And you can type in, um, you know, um, whatever, like I, just, I usually use money or something. Lack of money. Could be health, could be, you can literally type about anything you want in here. And what it does is it goes and finds three scriptures and then a declaration that goes along with it. And the declaration is just declaring God's word over your life and situation. Uh, like, here's the first one, Philippians 4.19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. God, I thank you that I now trust that you will supply all my needs from your glorious riches given to me in Christ. Your provision is not dependent on my ability, but on your abundant generosity and love for me. That's great. Man, you speak that three, four, five times over your bank account and your situation. I think some faith is going to start to rise up. And then you go down to the next one and down to the next one. Oh man, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. That's my favorite financial scripture. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Man, and then you've got a declaration to speak that over your life. You can start over, you can do it again. It's pretty cool. I would say, go activate that thing. Go use it. Um, I keep it on my bookmarks so I, I can go in there and use it whenever I want. Is that pretty cool? Yeah, you guys can have it. Yeah, Josh said you did it for financial breakthrough yesterday. Awesome. John's using it. Elaine's using it. Cool. Yeah. Get I in love there. that app. It's awesome. It's, it's a great resource too. You know, I think the way you described how you get in there and you study the Bible, you look at different translations. Maybe you don't know where, where to look, what scriptures to look for. And so you can use the Faith on Demand app to kind of prime the pump. And then as soon as you, uh, as soon as you get the verses that it lists out, those three verses, man, go pull those up. Look at different translations. Let them speak to you, and uh, that's how you can dig. So, okay, we're ready to do this giveaway. Perfect giveaway. I've got people uh, lined up here by email address. Nice. So I'm gonna spin it, and if you win it, uh, just email us over your your address and your, and your details. And, uh, yes. If, if you want to, if you are the winner, if you can, uh, get in the school app and just message, you can just send me a direct message. Uh, and then we can go ahead and, um, get that mailed out to you. So awesome. Right, so I've never been like, I've never done a giveaway. I don't think other than like, not like this anyway, we're doing another giveaway tomorrow. Be fine, dude. Yeah. All right. Y'all ready? Here we go. Who's it going to be? Let's get a drum roll here. 
All right. Lakeisha, uh, let's go. We know her. Yes. I don't know if she's still. She's got to be at least at some point. Well, because uh, she registered. Get, yeah. Because uh, she registered. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Well, Lakeisha, if you can, yeah, congratulations. Everybody, congratulate Lakeisha. That's awesome. If you can, uh, just right there in the school community, just uh, message your mailing address, and we'll go ahead and get that sent out to you. Uh, your very own brand spanking new Dake Study Bible. We won't give you the one that's got all the highlights and all my notes. I've scribbled all in the margins and everything. <laughs> we'll give you we'll give you a brand new one so you can put your own notes in there. But uh, okay. and we're giving away another one tomorrow too. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Trey. I don't know. I, I, I think I need to do it one more time. Okay. I was given to Lakeisha, but I want to give it to somebody who's on right now. Sounds good. Sounds good. Two, two Dake Bibles. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. But if this next person we spend is not on, we'll, we'll, we'll be done. Okay. 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 <laughs> We're not just going to be giving away Dakes all day, huh? <laughs> all right. Who do we have? Lila Dot Bradshaw. All right, Lila. <laughs> Are you on, Lila? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. Do well, you, Lila, Lila do you have a Dake study Bible? Do you want one? Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Message Rob. Give, give me your details, and uh, we will get that sent out to you. Yeah. Right. And we'll send one to Lakeisha as well. Awesome, guys. Hey, thank you guys so much for, for being on the call today. Man, if you could do me a favor, what was one takeaway you got? There's probably so much. I've got uh, notes. I'm just looking at my notes. But just if what what was one takeaway that you got, drop it in the chat. And uh, this is this is strong. This is strong, guys. And so one of the things that we like to do when we finish these calls, we want to make sure that we set ourselves up to succeed. And God gave us so many awesome words of wisdom. You guys are putting it in the chat now. I love it. Have peace. The, the command to, uh, to not worry or not carry anxiety, to not be afraid, not tolerating thoughts. Uh, this is awesome. Using your words, knowledge for wisdom, only Jesus rules, nothing else. So many awesome uh, takeaways. And I believe that this was the word that you needed today. You set your expectation high for a breakthrough word to speak to your heart and just change everything. And that's what's happening right now. That's what's already happened. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to do three things for me, okay? I want you to, first of all, as you're putting your takeaway in the notes, I want you, after this call, take maybe five minutes before you jump to whatever is next and Write those things down, review your notes, and whatever it was, whatever instructions that you are given, specific instructions, maybe the Holy Spirit spoke to you and said, hey, do this specifically, schedule obedience. For some of you, it's going to be to go in that app, and it's going to be to get that, that confession. Uh, for others, it may be to write it out yourself, but whatever your action item is, go ahead, write it down, make it clear, and schedule obedience, okay? The next thing you need to do is you need to share it with someone else. School app is a great place to do that. Go in there and say, hey, this is what I got out of it, and this is what I'm going to do next, okay? Whenever you give yourself the opportunity to be accountable to others, you accelerate your results. You can go only so far by yourself, but you can go even further faster when you do it with others. So get your takeaway and schedule it, and then share it with somebody else. Say, hey, this is what I'm committing to do. Last thing I want you to do is I want you to invite someone to join school, okay? If you got something out of this and you're like, man, somebody else needs to be on here. They need to hear what's going on. There's a link that you can share. You can use it. You can share and invite them to come join. We're going tomorrow. Travis is going live tomorrow, Fired Up Fridays. So you definitely don't want to miss that. And so make sure you hop on, invite other people, and let's continue to grow with each other and continue to increase, take as many people with us as possible. So, yeah. Great job, guys. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for coming. Um, there's the link to school. Please invite somebody. Like you said, there's somebody, you know, that's going through something or that wants to level up or wants more, you know, somebody God's going to put a person or two or three on your heart. 
invite them. Uh, I'm going to bribe you guys one more time on Fired Up Friday tomorrow. Um, I have, I don't know exactly when it's going to go down, but I'll, I'll give you as much warning as I can. Uh, but I'm going to give away some cash. I'm going to give away some cash. And all you got to do is show up. And if you invite somebody, you saw those questions they ask, it'll say who referred you. They'll put your name in there, and then that'll give you another chance to win some cash. Okay? Might help you out. I think it'll be cool. Just a little blessing opportunity. And yes, I will bribe people all day long to come read the Bible. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome, guys. Hey, thanks, everybody, for being on today. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to go ahead and uh, give us a, a message, shoot a message to us on school. We'd love to be a part of just helping you continue to grow. But we will see you guys back here on tomorrow, Fired Up Fridays. Let's do it. Have a great day, guys. Love you guys. See ya.